Welcome everyone to the first episode of Behind the Rock. We are very excited to have you guys. I am Rudy Page. Next to me is my co-host Juwan De Jong. Um, welcome, my friend. How are you feeling? Thanks, Rudy. Um, really, really excited. We've been planning this for a couple of months now. You too know? long, too long, guys. Way too long. But that was on the golf course. Um, yeah, on the golf course. I don't know if we can call that golf. I should call it a guara guara more than, than golf. Yeah. But that's where everything started. Um, I mean, we we discussed the names when we came up to a couple of names. I can't remember what the names was again. It was something about the sweet and the salt and um, the long and the. I don't know what <laughs> names it was terrible. Yeah, it was but terrible. I think we it found something that is obviously catchy and that sums up um, what we try and achieve for the show is, yeah. is having a view of rugby. And I think um, from my past experience in rugby, behind the ruck is the best view of the game. 100%, yeah, because we, we started with behind the breakdown, but that, that sounds like a midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> and then we came to the behind the ruck. I mean, it's 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 a name that's catchy and uh, the name of both of us liked, um, especially the ruck. The ruck is one of the busiest parts of the rugby game. And uh, I don't know if you're too familiar with the ruck because you've never been there. You always be out um, there. One of my coaches used to say you play piano when you scrum off, you just touch the ruck, you're not <laughs> part of the ruck. Yeah. But um, quickly, I just want to give a quick shout out, a partner to delicious bouquet mm. oh yeah yeah 100%, yeah we're having us in the studios for this awesome and setup and for making setup. for making sure that we we get behind the rock off the ground with our first episode to a massive shout out to yeah, them 100%, and yeah. the studios and an awesome yeah, this is, this is quite this professional, is next level eh? actually yeah. next level we wanted to start what in, in your living room my yeah, living room. i wanted to start small and then obviously they came on board with us and now we got this fantastic um setup yeah um, which okay. I'm actually so happy about. Yeah, um, yeah. so I'm, I'm I'm excited as well. Um, I mean, we started. We wanted to start this post- podcast just to just talk about life, man. It's not all about the rugby. Obviously, we rugby was part of our life for a very long time. We want to cover a lot of things like mentorship, leadership, you know, um, fatherhood, um, maybe dad bots, all those type of things. And 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 we had to wing it. We had to wing it. None of us played wing, but we had to wing it. Just talk about life. This is our experiences, our views on things. Um, and it's it's always a tough one because you you know a lot of things a lot of people um, we might step on toes and stuff like that but at the end of the day we just we're not we're not professional uh, they call it pundits so p- pundits yeah, yeah or I presenters we, yeah we just um, yeah to two rugby players with mics that's that's basically two rugby it, players yeah. with mics that yeah. want to share our views and have a conversation with each and other about time, rugby. Yeah. So yeah, so when you do get us on the street, don't be like, um, "Who's the funny guy now?" So, so just take it easy on us, um, and uh, we're just gonna wing it and, and and enjoy our time over here. Yeah. So for for the first episode, guys, what we have on the menu, um, we want to talk all things rugby. Obviously, that is that is the first first of all. So we're gonna discuss the rugby championship. Obviously, we had a flipper nice game. Um, the boys beating the Wallabies. We're gonna cover that game. We want to touch on the All Blacks against the Pumas down in Mendoza. And we also want to um, just discuss the Baby Box playing against Ireland in the semi-final the past weekend. So that's what we got on the menu. And then we are, we are very fortunate and lucky to have Springbok Lock on the show today, Marvin Ori, who had a marvellous game and an awesome, an awesome shift um, down at, at Loftus. So we're going to have him on the game. So very exciting times so behind the rack on the first episode, uh, partner. Yeah, yeah, exciting times. Um, I, I must say, it's going to be good to to have Marvin's view a little bit on on what's happening inside the the Springbok camp. And um, I mean, the results this weekend was was fantastic, especially when it comes to to, to our um, game against Australia. Um, Were you happy with the guys' performance, partner? Yeah, happy. Um, from my point of view, I must say, uh, it's a perfect start for the Springboks. Uh, for us, uh, uh, the guys came out firing. I mean, playing in front of fifty one thousand. Um, Loftus, Fairfield people, you know, alti- altitude always matters. You would know coming from yeah, from from Victoria. Definitely my favorite stadium uh, in the world. Good memories, so yeah. Good memories. Springboks don't lose at Loftus, so. But yeah. I must say, I I found it quite nice the party atmosphere and the vibe at the stadium. I think it's something I haven't seen in a while yeah. in one of our home games. So to everyone that that went to Loftus and created that 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 perfect and nice party atmosphere for the guys. I think that's what we want in our stadiums, right? We want to have yeah. an atmosphere where home games becomes almost imp- 
impossible for for South Africa to lose. It's picking up nicely, I must say. And in, in the COVID times, it was tough. It was you know for the past for two three years we had no crowds in there. Then it was to one thousand, ten thousand. It picked up very slowly. But the past year has been awesome. You know, looking at the grand f- the grand final of the URC. You know, having a full pa- uh, pack stadium this weekend as well uh, up in Loftus. The people coming out wearing the jerseys again. You know, people supporting the team, and it makes a massive massive difference. You would know when it comes to like when you're on the field and you. Just yeah, um, people shouting your name. So, yeah, obviously we are trying to block that stuff out, but you can just feel the energy, feel the vibe of the people, and that's that's just awesome to see. So um, hopefully, when it comes to a couple of weeks when we play against Argentina, um, our last game of the the rugby championship, hopefully we can have the same. The crowd. same, yeah. I think obviously discussing that first game where the boys played against the Wallabies. Um, any standout things that you saw within the Springbok team, players that you thought were um, that played really well. Um, what what was your your view and thoughts on that game, partner? For for me, I must say, when you look at the Springbok teams, you always think about uh, who was the players that stand out, and 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 when you go deep into the squad. But for me, everyone actually st- stood up. Eh? Everyone played a fantastic game. Um, for me, now it's a- actually other way around. When you look at the, who was the quiet guys, you know. Um, um, and there's a couple of quiet guys, but there's there's a couple of guys that also stood out for me. Uh, I must say, um, Andre Estreizen. Um, and Eskom, what a fantastic performance from both of them. Um, I was actually very surprised in, in terms of um, what I've seen from from the, the two of them in the past couple of years. And um, especially under Estres, and you know, um, everyone sees him, he's got the stack around him, he's just big and physical and set up the balls. But the passes he, he threw around, the, the way he squared people up, the, the attacking kicks he put through, um, the, just finding space and putting Kirtley and uh, all the other boys into space was absolutely fantastic to see. He had a crack of a game and Eskom as well. Um, and, and those are the two boys that actually stood up and, and they don't even have a lot of caps. They, they, I think they've got like, I'm not too sure, but they got a, only a couple of caps and they got a lot of other experience around them. But those two boys really st- stood up for me. And then you got guys like, you know, Marvin. Marvin played a fantastic Marvin game as well. Yeah. Well. Uh, Mani had a, a, a crack of a game. And well, I was so happy for Mani, eh, partner. I thought he was excellent. Um, first start, I know um, when you're in that pivot positions, 9, 10, 15, there's a lot more that goes into than just um, catch and carry. So 100%, I yeah. thought he was outstanding. He and was he, outstanding. He's, probably, he's probably put his hand up uh, to make sure that he's on that plane to, to France. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Putting his hand up, he actually did more than putting his hand up. I must say, um, man is a hard worker. He's a he's a he's a fantastic um, player and skillful player. And there was a lot of debate about you know leading up to Australia game where where they're like, um, who's gonna wear the number ten jersey for us at, at the Rugby World Cup? Um, but I must say, he brought something different because um, South Africa, we we all know we got a strong set piece, strong kicking game, strong strong defense. But he brings something different to the game. Um, especially you know, screening up players, you know, fixing players, you know, running the hot pot, finding space. He, he always feels like he's got a lot of time, um, a lot of time on the ball because he can kick uh, and in the same moment he can actually make the pass as well, putting guys into space and the passing is, is accurate enough to, to make sure that, that, that they get half a, half a shoulder onto him. Um, but all in all, it's going to be a cracker, cracker of a, of a, of the season, especially when it comes to that 10 channel, because that 10 channel is very important, especially for the spring box. Yeah, just for me to, to also talk about Mani, I think the biggest compliment I can probably give him is the amount of tries his, his outside back scores when he's playing in that pivot position. And I think to touch back on your point is his ability to stay square. He's got a lovely set of hands yeah. on him. The time. Yeah. And it's accurate. And that's what the forward wants. extremely accurate yeah. with his passing. And I've watched the game on Saturday. Whenever the ball is not in his hands, he's always looking at the next thing that's happening. He's always looking up to pick up space. Where's the next opportunity? And I think for a lot of kids, if you get time to watch him play and just see how he, how he conducts his team around the field and the tries that, that his team scores when he's at 10 is, is quite something to be held. And I'm obviously holding thumbs that he's on that plane. I think his, his performance on the weekend was... Hopefully, be down the door. That there's no more excuses for him to go to the World Cup, especially after the past two years. What he's done for the Stormers, taking him to two finals, which has been awesome, and so hopefully that will put him into a good position with the national selectors. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and it's been awesome for the Stormers. Oof, uh, it's I, been I, too good. I must say, and he's been playing so much rugby for the Stormers, playing a week in and week out. And but, you know, being a teammate. Of him, it's, it's all about the hard work and him looking after his body because he's the one guy that's that's in early, 
um, out late, working hard on the simple and the small little things, you know, the rehab stuff, the, the recovery stuff. And those type of things makes him play week in and week out. And um, he's a confident rugby player. He's in incredible form now. And he, br- he brings us a little bit of a balance now w- within the spring, uh, Springbok team. You know, it's it's not long. Usually you... Usually the Springboks, when it comes to in our own 22, we'll kick the ball. But it's what's awesome to see that the boys is having a go a little bit. And they and were quite it, uh, adventurous this weekend, exactly. eh? And that's because there's, there's a couple of playmakers. It's a good balance within the squad. We've got like Mani at 10, we've got Vili at, at, at 15 that can, can move the ball. They can pass 10, 15, 20 meters. And uh, all other uh, guys around them just brings out the other different type of balance where they can uh, get us go forward, especially with Andre Esther is in. Um, but it's just lovely to see the the balance he brought uh, in. So it's going to be a cracker of a, a cracker of a game this weekend when he hopefully gets a chance. I think he's on the bench this weekend. Um, but there's there's a couple of other options as well. Hopefully, um, Andre will also get back from injury and 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 he can he can show what he can do. There's Elton as well. There's Damien you know, um, getting his opportunities this weekend. Oh, so we'll nice, see what's going nice to happen. Deft. Good good um, headaches for for yeah Russell yeah yeah Jack to have yeah hundred percent. I must say, I also want to compliment. I thought, um, obviously, Kurtley was man of the match. Yeah, outstanding. Yeah, yeah. He's just, he's like a house on fire. <laughs> Everything he touches is turning to gold. Yeah. Um, and it's something yeah. about that headgears partner. Yeah. The boys in the scrum caps. Dangerous. I, who started I should have played with one. Huh? I should have played you with a scrum cap. Yeah, but y- you can only play with a scrum cap. I knew there was something missing in my career. When you it phys- was the scrum cap. When you're physical enough, you can wear scrum caps. But you, if you make one tackle a game, <laughs> stay away. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away. So I played a couple of games with with, with Ed Gear. Oh, you um, look terrible! I yeah. can remember <laughs> a couple of games when I was at at Was. A couple of games at the Western Province. A couple of games at the Stormers. We should actually get that footage. Did it? Uh, did it work? Okay. Is there some magic powers in the scrum cap? There's a little bit of magic powers. Which is once you wear, uh, we call I called myself the Power Rangers. So once <laughs> once I put on the scrum cap, I'm I'm, I'm more physical because I know I've got this, um, a little bit of a seat belt, a little bit of protection. Yeah. Um, on that, so um, yeah, it's good, it's good to see the guys, you know, having a cracker, um, playing some good rugby with Indus Scrum Cap, and then all all credit must go to 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 the goat, the legend Gio Aplon, that uh, actually started it. Oh my um, goodness! Yeah, the one and only. The one and only. <laughs> yes, sir, but um, yeah. I think another standout partner for me was, um, and I don't, I know the two of us, we got no um, right to talk about this, but I thought the set piece of the Springboks this weekend against Australia was extremely good. Oh, wow. They yeah. got a, um, a lot of penalties out of the scrum, and once you got dominance there, I think the game just becomes easier because Australia was co- was on the back foot the whole time because of that set piece dominance. And I think that's obviously a, a, an important strength for us to have going into the World Cup. What was your views on, on our set piece? I know it's something that is a bit boring to talk about, yeah, but what was your views? Set piece for us is a bit boring because we, we, we just want to, you know, uh, play some ball out wide and uh, um, razzle dazzle it out wide. But I must say set piece is also a strength of ours. And it's just a good to see that uh, our clinical we were in the scrums, our clinical we were at the lineouts. And the balance we have, uh, with actu- especially within the lineouts, um, we had front. Uh, we had um, we, we threw the ball f- at the front. We threw the ball at the back. And as you know, it's always difficult to throw the ball at the back. So it's, it's mostly a fifty-fifty because guys usually favour the front, the front option. Uh, especially when 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 Curtly scored with the one try. You know, having a back ball. You know, mauling it a, a little bit, yeah, breaking that was, out. That was a nice play. Yeah, breaking like out that. to the front. You know, we got front peels. We got back peels. Um, there's just so much options. We got a nice mold. variety in our game, eh? Hundred percent, and 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 that's going to keep nice variety. That kept Australia busy. Um, you know, if we can do the same this weekend against New Zealand, it's. It's going to give them a little bit of headaches, especially uh, leading up to this week where they have to analyse us because uh, there's so much things to analyse uh, about because of our balance at the line of uh, time, our balance at the scrums, um, our strike plays with, with the backs as well, you know, with our five men's and our seven men's line outs. So uh, it's, it's just awesome to see the, the balance within the Springbok teams. Um, the conditions was obviously in our favour. You no, know, we had some running rugby and... and and all these type of things, and it's going to be very difficult as, uh, this weekend when it comes to to Auckland. Um, they've got a different venue now; it's not at, at Eden Park. So hopefully, it's not going to be wet and greasy. And hopefully, we can we can play some ball because you know got guys like Cheston Colby, um, Kirtley, and all these boys. They they need they need ball in hand and and a little bit of space. And on Australia, obviously, they were opponents, the Springboks opponents this weekend. I was kind of quite surprised, um, Jupes. They didn't land the punch or looked like they wanted to, to land the punch yeah. in a game. Um, is that something they would should be worried about, would be worried about? Or is it just one of those, you know, you get those games where 
things kind of that don't go your way and you get that quicksand effect? Was it I one was of those or is it is it something they should particularly be worried about? I was actually surprised as well, especially with um with Eddie Jones coming back. Yes. You know, um was he was very successful actually with, with England at times. And um and with the senior players as well. They had Coit Cooper, um Mick Extremely White, good team. Um Hooper, Slipper, all these boys. And it's it's Def's a, a good team. Um but it was tough for them, especially when, when you when you lose your, when you don't get a lot of ball, you play the wrong areas of the field, you know, when you see set piece, your line, your scrums and line lines doesn't give you that momentum to go forward. It's always going to be a tough game at the, F, uh, at the office, especially when you have a magic man like Wade Cooper, um, you know, running the show. And he was, he was, he was, he was choked a bit, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I was quite looking forward to seeing him play um, after yes. his injury. And it's obviously, yeah, the flow of the game kind of, um, didn't allow him to 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 play to his strengths or to even get into the game because I don't, in all honesty, I don't think he was in the game and he would probably yeah, be yeah. first to admit it. Yeah, but I think it's he just came back from injury as well. He didn't play a lot of, of games it's when he was in Japan. Japan. In Japan, yeah. yeah. And the level of rugby to Japan to international, and you would know as well. It's it's a different level. You get from Curry Cup as a step up to URC, but from URC to international rugby, or even the Japan League to international rugby, yeah, it's it four steps. It's not even just a, it's just one step. So. I mean, you, you will you will fire. Um, hopefully, you can fire um, early enough, just before the World Cup, and, and that then then it will be a different picture. But all in all, it is a different type of coach from the from from what I've heard from the English lads and, and English boys when it, when it was at, at Wasps. So uh, hopefully, you can get the balance right, the culture right in terms of what they want to do in, um, within the squad and how how we manage the senior players with the junior players and how we can get the squad together. Because a brilliant coach. You know his results shows it, but um, it's it's all about the comms, f- piece of belonging, those type of things that makes a team a very really good. So team. we're just gonna put it down to that it was a bad day. It offers nothing 100%. more to look into it. Hundred percent. They'll be they'll be a force to reckon with at the World Cup. Uh, that's what I that's what I think. Uh, you know, it's 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 basically the rugby championship is big and it's massive and everyone wants to win it, but it's it's more like trials. It's more like a warm up leading into. And the Rugby World Cup. So we'll see a different Australia team when it comes to the Rugby World Cup. Okay, now the next one, partner, was the game down in Mendoza. It was the All Blacks against uh, the Pumas. Yeah, did you watch the game? I watched the game, my friend. That I was a late, late game. It was a late game. <laughs> a late <laughs> game. I then. was up. Luckily, the, the kiddies was in bed. Mm. But I was quite impressed by the All Blacks, eh? Mm. I must say, I thought the, the quality of their skill set, um, the intensity to which they played with, um, was quite impressive. I thought actually compared to other years, um, they they actually tried to play in their own, if you call it the grey area, but from the from the try line to the ten meter line of the in there, half, they actually wanted to have a go before they kicked first, mm-hmm. like a run a run a run pass kick philosophy, which I kind of liked. And I must say, Damien McKenzie brought something yeah, different something to different, them, which yeah. I didn't expect. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, something way, way different that uh, we're not used to actually seeing at the number ten jumper for for New Zealand. But yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a good game. Um, uh, they put Argentina under massive pressure. It's almost like they've they've watched the South African game and be like, it was let very me just similar the two games. Yeah, let me just show these guys. Uh, listen, yes, it's, it's not going to be easy next week. Um, it, it it just felt like that. And like uh, looking at the game, the the type of play and the way of play was pretty much similar. Um, I must say, New Zealand at the s- same five man type of line now, same more philosophies. Um, you know, strike plays as well. The the one thing that that that's a bit worrying. Is about this. The strike was very, very good, especially from scrums. Um, so they they've got a little bit of a change with, with within their scrums. Usually, we, 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 when we have a scrum, we go options twelve, you know, straight to twelve, bash it up, and those type of things. But they made making it move through to uh, Damien McKenzie's hands now. Um, so that that's going to be a little bit of a threat, especially this weekend, you know, defensively, uh, as defensively, especially in the thirteen jumper, but. But look, Kanye, uh, it's going to be, he's experienced enough to, to know what's coming yeah, and how to, shut, yeah, how to shut those uh, space down. But yeah, it was good to see Damien at, 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 at number 10. I'm not too sure um, when Richie will be ready or is he injured or... He was on the bench, partner, so I, th- I don't know what, um, if they did an experiment. Um, we will obviously see when once the team is out for this weekend yeah. against the box. But I thought the old guy, um, Aaron Smith, is... Yeah, 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 listen. Yeah, I think he's he's still probably the best grammar for me in the world. Yeah, like a red wine, eh? He like a red wine. Dis- it's just, he, honestly, it just gets better and better. The more he plays, 
His passing, the amount of time he gives his backs, his forwards on the ball, with the quality of his pass, is something that we probably don't value enough. Mm. And I think that that was something that stood out to me again this weekend, just seeing um, the quality of each delivery that he gives to to either his back or forwards or to his back line. Mm. And that gives them time to make good decisions. It gives them time to to either play inside, outside, which came into fruition the more the game came on. Yeah, yeah. The longer the game came on. So I thought he was outstanding once again for me. And I think he's one of the the key players for them going into the World Cup, especially his experience. Um, he's been there, seen it. He's won a World Cup in 2015, so I was quite impressed with uh, with Aaron. Yeah. Um, like I never said fine, that. fine red wine. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. you would know all about it. Yeah, I must say, uh, he, this, he's got. They've got a couple of experienced guys, you know, and he's one of them. He, he must, he must steer the ship. And but first of all, it's it's about your play first, and he's, he's still in good form. I mean, it's his accuracy, his accuracy is is pinpoint, and that's what he based his game on is his distribution. And like we spoke about Mani and and Valley's distribution as well. You need to get that pass on the perfect spot behind his chest on the front line because when you when 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 those pass just go, goes a little bit behind you that's two seconds off what you see in front of you is two seconds off your physicality within the contact so that's that's going to be crucial especially when it comes to those pivot n- numbers which is a 9 10 15 the guys that's putting guys into space but it's it, it was good to see um they're good to see the combination as well between um Aaron smith and, and damon mckenzie but uh, it's going to be interesting to see who's going to start at, at number 10 because that's going to be the crucial little position especially when it comes to the spring box I don't know if they went with Damon McKenzie because of um, testing it for similar type of vibe with, with, with that Nani brings to the part in terms yes. of that balance with the forwards and the backs play, you know, striking, being effective in all aspects in the game. Doesn't matter where in the field it is. Because usually when it comes to, um, no one wants to play inside their own half, but the magic and the stuff that they have can just bring a little bit of a different um, impact to the game. And then looking forward, obviously those two teams... Um Aster Springboks going against the All Blacks this weekend down in Auckland. Um, from your own personal view, what do you think is going to be important for our boys? And what do you think the All Blacks will probably test us on most? Um, like, like I said earlier, it's, it, it depends on the weather. It depends on the conditions. This weekend was that fantastic. Due, that view is not nice, eh? Now that you're talking about that pass, now that yeah. pass needs to be zipped into that, uh, um, into that space, making sure that forwards get front football. Um, it's going to be a crack of a game. Uh, it's, it's, it's such a tough one to call, especially with the All Blacks playing a crack, uh, a good game this weekend. You know, South Africa had a, a, a great start uh, as well this weekend. Um, but it's, uh, it's all going to come up to fr- uh, what's happening at the front set piece and, and physicality of the forwards. The forwards, the battle of the forwards is going to be the main, main, main um, aspect and in, in, in because wh- whoever wins the battle of the forwards gets front foot momentum, gets in behind him, and then Ma, uh, Ma, uh, is it Mani or da- um, Damien, Damien Willems uh, or the other end, Richie or, or uh, Yeah, it's such, or a, it's such a cliche and boring thing to say about the forwards that dominates. Yeah, that's, that's tend always to, the, the that team case, tends yeah. to end up on the winning side. Yeah, and that's, that's w- we would know about it once. We want to s- to have time and space on the ball, and the only way you can get it if your scrum's going forward, you know, ball's going forward, and the forwards is going forward. And and that's where rugby is t- today. It's a, it's a physical sport, and um, and the forwards got the got the best set piece and and, and play forward to express their physicality. And I'm act- I'm actually quite excited uh, and happy for Grant Williams as well. Mm, on the bench, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm quite a big fan of him of him too. Uh. Yeah. Um, is it? Yeah, yeah, big fan of his play, the, especially the past twelve to fourteen months. Yeah. I thought his his form is excellent. He's been good. He's been good. Um, at nine, there's actually uh, there's a lot of competition a at nine. It's, good uh, it's competition. a massive headache, yeah. Especially with Kubas that played this weekend. You know, Grant uh, it came, uh, came on. on. Uh, I think it's Fafin Grant this weekend. Fafin Grant this weekend. Still got the shoulder as well, and 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 Jaden. Jaden as well. Who's a fantastic, um, fantastic rugby player, Jaden yeah. Hendricks. What's your thoughts? Because I, I was looking at this weekend, especially with the Springboks as well. It's Kubas and 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 Grant. They fast. Yes. And they they so fast they can actually play on the wing. Hundred percent. And to get to the breakdown, you need to be quick to get the ball away and all those type of things. What's your thoughts on you know having a fast little nine? Um, or, or do you prefer being more clinical um, technically with your kicking boot, you know, with your accuracy, with your decision making, those type of things? I think one of one of my coaches actually back in the day used to tell me, you get selected for your X Factor and you get dropped for your basics. So if that makes any sense. Um, so from my side is I think um, 
you need to be sound and tidy as a nine when it comes to your basic uh, skill set, your primary skill set that you need. But I think the way Grant Williams has actually impressed me is his passing, the quickness to his breakdown, his accuracy in his decision making, which has been excellent, especially for Sharks and the limit of time he's got for the Springboks. And then obviously his X factor is his undeniable speed of the mark that makes him that will obviously put him into a, a position where I see will select him for that World Cup. Yeah. But I'm excited to see him play. I'm obviously uh, hoping that he has another good impression coming off the bench and solidifies his spot going to the World Cup. But from a starting position, it's once again Faf, the old end. He's been there. He's done it for the Springboks many a times. Um, he's probably seen it all. Um, we're going to need his feistiness. We're going to need his accuracy of that left foot, um, especially playing in New Zealand. But I'm quite happy with the two of them um, currently for this weekend going going yeah. into the game. That's that's I think that's that's one position that's always going to be tough. You know, we've got experience all around. You know, you got Faf that's been at the World Cup, Kubas that's been at the World Cup, and then the new guys that's on form. Jaden has been playing a lot of games last okay, year for nice. the Springboks. I mean, I shall had a, a, a good um, URC um, um, competition. We've got Grant as well that is a, a fantastic URC competition. So um, yeah, that's one position that's going to be. I don't know if you can take all five. Um, you but cannot. You can only take three partners. Exactly. Only three. Yeah, so it's a bit of a sleepless night for for whoever uh, selects the team. Yeah. If you gotta go quickly, which three are you taking to the World Cup? Quickly, just of the it's, thing. It's it's very tough. It's very tough to make a call on it. No it's wrong just, answers. Yeah, just for, for me, it's just, it's a tough one to. It depends what the coaches want, uh, what they see, what's gonna happen in, in France. You know, it's gonna be different conditions. It's very wet and greasy um, conditions. So maybe technical going to be uh, your go-to or, or even if, it, if, if it's the conditions, I think it might be like in between this um, summer or so maybe winter. I think, yeah, it's winter time. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's moving into the winter time. So maybe you need a technical a aspect to it and, 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 and leave the, the fancy. Uh, the Can I get an answer, please? Three names on Scrum Off that you're taking. I'll give my three, you give your three. Let's go. I'm not a qualified nine, a nine so so I'm only going to stick with your three answers, and I'll and I'll and I'll have my opinion okay, on that. He's it. jumping out of the <laughs> ship. He's he's left the ship. He's uh, left it to well, me. What do you think? For me, the three I'll probably take. And please, boys, don't be angry at me. This is just my opinion. Um, I'll probably go with Faf. I'll probably go with Jaden, and I'll go with Grant. That's the three. Looking at yeah, Jaden, he's looking strong, at the future. It's, it's important that we. Obviously, make sure that there's people for c contingency plan, looking into the future of Springbok rugby, making sure that he gets to see what a World Cup is like. He's played a, num a number of starts also for the box. Faf has been there, done that. We know what we got with him. And I think um, Grant just brings something different, something completely different to those two guys. He brings that X factor, he brings that pace, he brings the speed. And I think that would be my three guys that I would probably take and back for the World Cup. Yeah. No, I don't have experience at the number nine jumper, so so oh, yeah, yeah like it is what it is. <laughs> that yeah. So that that is a exciting game coming up this weekend. I want to wish the box all the best for that, yep. uh, boys. We we behind you. Obviously, yeah. the, the two of us from behind the rug. Early nine morning. Yeah, that's so nice. It's a, it's a Cup seven o'clock and rugs. No, it's seven o'clock breakfast, Bri. Yes. Huh? Get it on there. Huh? That mm. eggs on it. The roaster <laughs> cook and an egg. I never said that. Get on So there. all the best spring box down in Auckland. I hope you guys um, make the country proud as always. And yeah, I hope there's no serious injuries for you guys. And, and hope you guys get back so we can have a chat to you guys on behind the rack. 100%. So up next, guys, we are very fortunate on Behind the Rack to have Marvin Ori, um, starting lock of the Springboks mm. in the past weekend. Are you excited, Pat? I'm excited. I'm excited to see what's happening. There's a lot of lot of stories going around, but I want to hear it from him. Yes, I was fortunate enough to to live with him for a few years. Uh, is it? We stayed together in Pretoria. Mm. Um, very very detailed guy. I was, um, and it makes sense why he's where he's now in his life yeah. and in his rugby. Was very detailed, very disciplined, went the extra yard. So all the boys out there, there's a lesson to be learned here. Okay, guys. Yeah. He made sure that he, he got his ducks in a row. So now that it is the big stage, it flows easily. Let's get it going. A warm welcome. We've got Marvin Ori here at Behind the Rock. First episode. Exciting times to have you here. Brother, how are you feeling? But first of all, how's the body feeling after the crack of a game this weekend? No, feeling good, guys. Um, Yeah, of course, it was a tough match. Uh, 
Australia always a uh, always good opposition. Um, yeah, I think the altitude in Loftus got to them, which was of course good for us. But uh, yeah, feeling good, healthy, no serious injuries, so ready to go again. Oh, that's awesome, Mavi. I think from my side, I want to congratulate you, my friend, on an awesome game. I thought you were excellent. Um, you were like a debit order. <laughs> Consistent <laughs> yeah. as always. In your face, answering <laughs> all this type of stuff. But before, yeah, before we go into rugby quickly, you. we have to congratulate him on his, uh, the little one. Yeah, so yeah. So in his our, life. Our, yeah. Second, in his life. our second baby boy was born um, on the 23rd, 23rd of June. So he's, he's about two weeks and a couple of days now. Um, yeah, healthy so far. Yeah, and the Mom wife. Is healthy, so. Two boys, Marvi, for you? Yeah, no, the, they they keeping me busy. Yeah, so the lock partnership for World Cup uh, or Springbok Rugby 2050 saw today. Marvin got us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two brothers going to 20, 2050. <laughs> that was awesome, Marvin. Man. And I think there was a little bird, Juba, um, last night that told me mm -hmm. he's got good news this morning on his future. Marvin, do you mind sharing with our listeners um, what's happening in your in your, the next part of your rugby career? Yeah, yeah, guys. So um, we I've decided to to take up an an offer in um, in France with Popignon. So um, so yeah, it's exciting times, man. Um, we're really looking forward to to a new challenge. Um, yeah, I've been many years in South Africa, and uh, yeah, when the opportunity came, it's um, yeah, we 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 jumped on it, and we we excited myself and my family. So we're looking forward, man. That's awesome. It's a good experience. Any French yeah. lessons you guys are taking currently? Yeah. What is the, the yeah, Savas? Can you speak? Savas? You've been there a couple of years. Um, <laughs> I've been there a couple of years, but, but that's why I'm speak. retired because uh -huh. um, the language didn't go to great, Mavi. So uh -huh. I think that's the first <laughs> tip I want to give to you. Make sure you get yeah, your Savas no. and, and all of that in order. No lessons. I was. I actually said to my wife, we have to, mm. we have to jump on that as soon as possible. So at least we have a bit of a baseline when we get there. Because at the moment we yeah. we will go in, <laughs> we'll go in with with no knowledge. So, yeah, I think we have a work cut out for the next few weeks. Yeah, no, that's great. So, Marvi, just I don't want to put you on the spot, but when are you leaving? How long are you going? Uh, so it is a two year a two year um contract, and and uh, yeah, I will I will join up with the with the team once my commitments with the with the national team has has come to an end. Whenever that will be, hopefully, hopefully um after the World Cup. 100%. Yeah. This is a massive, massive loss for us at the Stormers, I must say. I'm going to miss... It's actually weird speaking English to Marvin because every is morning... It? Yeah, every morning is like, Marvin, yay, but city man. <laughs> That's how we operate. Um, but yeah, it's a massive, massive loss for us. Um, yeah, it's huge. We, we're going to struggle to fall. Um, yeah, but I think it, from my side, I think obviously for Marvin, his family, this is a massive... And, and I've been in France, which is... It's a great country to play rugby. I mean, the people are fanatical about the rugby, so I think you will enjoy that part, having full stadiums, people singing the whole time. So from that side, I think you'll you'll really enjoy it. I think your family will enjoy it. Perpignan is luckily the, the beautiful part of France as well, down south. So you guys will have beautiful beaches and sunny weather to enjoy. So I'm actually quite jealous, you but to be totally honest. Is it? The pan chocolate. Is it, is the pan chocolate? Pan of chocolate. Oh, pan of pan chocolate. chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Might pick up a few cages, Marvi. Yeah, a lot of, lot of those. Um, Marvi, just to, to um, come back to this weekend, um, unbelievable game this weekend, you know, against yeah. Australia. Um, at Loftus, it was like 51,000 people at Loftus. Yeah, the what was the, Yeah, what was the atmosphere? What was the vibe like? What was the vibe in the camp like? Uh, what was the experience like? Yeah. No, it was it was an amazing experience, guys. Um. I must say, uh, a bit Loftus is it's it's part of the fabric of South African rugby. It's a traditional, um, uh, a traditional stadium for South Africa. So the the team's got a got a, a good history over there, and, and of course to see all all of those people in the same most special man. Um, yeah, the camp the camp has been good. We we we've had three weeks of free season, we, which was not so good. But but of course the 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 fun part is always game week. So um yeah that was good and and, and to just get the 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 win is, it was just a, a cherry on the cake and and a bit of reward for for the work that we've put in over the last few weeks. And are you happy, Mavi, with um, your personal performance and making sure that you give yourself the best possible opportunity in making that squad? 
Um, yeah, of course. I think the match the match went well for for me on a on a personal level. Some some stuff around the set piece uh, that I think we we um, for, for personally and, and and together with the with the team, I think it could have gone better. But um, yeah, I think for me um, every day in the in in the training and then and then when I get an opportunity in the matches to is to just do my best. Um, I, I mean, you you guys know. The challenges of professional rugby, especially with the national team, you know, is, um, not, not one one can't always control everything. But I think the output, the energy um, in the trainings and in the match, that is a that is a one big thing that one can control. So um, yeah, for that is the emphasis for me over the last few weeks, and and when whenever there will hopefully be another opportunity. Yeah. No, 100%, I must agree, and, and um, leading up to this weekend as well, um, we've got the All Blacks in Auckland this weekend, so um, I know there's a, there's a lot of changes that's going to be there, there's a couple of guys that's got left behind, especially, so you're not there um, this weekend, what's, what's your plans this weekend, where are you going to watch the game? Um, yeah, so, so my plans this weekend is to, is to be a, a, a good father, I'm, I'm, <laughs> as, 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 as good up. as I can, yeah. you know, I must, I must out when my boy, when my boy was born and on, fr- on Friday the twenty third, I, I had to go back to Pretoria on the Sunday again. So, uh, my uh, wife has been alone with the with the boys the last um, couple of weeks. So, so for for me, the, over the, in the ne- in the immediate future, is to is to be as good a father as I can. Um, spend a lot of time with the with the boys and my family, and make the bo- make the most of it. And then, of course, I have to I have to stay fit and. Um, yeah, and the, the match I'll probably be at home or, or watch a match with my family. I think it's on it's in the morning on Saturday, yeah, yeah, so nice and early. Yeah, it's probably but early time, to yeah. yeah, it's a bit early to get the boys out. So we'll probably we'll probably be on the couch and cup of coffee and watch the match. Yeah, cheer the boys on. And and from expectation wise, what do you think the All Blacks from a different challenge are gonna give to Australia this weekend, especially playing playing in Auckland? What would what's your views on on what they're gonna give the the spring box from a challenging point of view i think the the first big thing that will be different compared to what we had uh, 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 last weekend in in uh, pretoria is the conditions um uh, you know everyone knows a, a evening match in in new zealand i've not yet played national level but in in, in club we've played a couple of times in an evening match in new zealand um of course uh, the the ball is a, the, there's some dew on the grass and the ball is a bit wet, so I think that is probably the first thing that will be different. And um, yeah, of course, everyone knows New Zealand is a is a team with a lot of skillful players. They they um, they've been known to they've been known to play with um you know with good skill, try to um, give the ball some air, and 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 of course I think also Australia tried to do that in in patches last week to try try to take the ball out wide. So um, yeah, I think it will be. It will be a, a big challenge, of course. New Zealand, in New Zealand, was always tough. Um, a lot of special um, players in the backline, and of course, the forwards. Some really good players in the forwards as well. I think, I think it will be a challenge. Of course, um, they also only recently finished their Super Rugby season, so they they should be match fit, and, and it was evident in their game against Argentina as well. And of course, we we also had a, a really good match in Australia. So it's two teams with high confidence, and and. Um, uh, you know, a good match fitness, so it should be good, a good match, I think. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, the yeah, conditions is always a bit tough, that side, especially playing at night. The ball is greasy. Um, but I must say, um, all in all, it's going to be a crack of a game. Yeah, I think it, I think it's basically the final of, of, um, of the championship. Of the championship, yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. yeah, obviously, the last time I was in Auckland, it wasn't um, some great memories. Um, <laughs> I don't have great memories there as well. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking, huh? that, uh, that was unfortunately my 2017 or, or in, at Albany. Yeah, we won't oh, talk yeah. about the score line, which is not important. Oh, yeah. Not important. Yeah, yeah. I, so I will be rooting 100% for the Springboks to do well this weekend, Jupes. Yeah, me I too, think me it's too. important that we, we rectify our visits to Auckland, obviously, as a country. And we're looking forward to that game, especially the guys yeah, from Brian. Behind the rock. Yeah, any game in New Zealand is always tough, eh? I don't know. If, uh, I don't think I've got. You a think it's thing. a mental thing, partner? I don't think <laughs> it's. I mean, it's a different uh, squad now, different setup now. So um, back in the day, you, you know, when you play against New Zealand, it's always tough um, over that side. It's just a mental block, man. And um, I, I feel like what the guys have showed this past weekend uh, uh, against Australia, 
Um, oh, just, we looked so good. Just, yeah, it's a really showcase good. that, that um, we're going to have a massive crack of a game. And I mean, it's not at Eden Park, it's a different venue, which yes. means they are dangerous at e Eden Park. I mean, they've got 48 consecutive um, victories um, at Eden Park. So hopefully that's that's going to give us a little bit of an oomph um, to, to, to get one over in New Zealand this, uh, this weekend. I think, um, obviously, I think looking at the Springboks from the outside, obviously, Mavi, you're in the camp, just from the outside, yeah. it looks like a squad that, that that understands who they are, their identity. They know how to win rugby games. They're not lost in, in trying to be in two different worlds. So I think I'm quite confident that this group of Springboks knows exactly how to win rugby games, whether it's home or away. They understand who they are and they are confident in in the product that they're currently delivering on the field. So I'm quite confident that the boys will do well down in Auckland this weekend. Same, we're in the same boat. Yeah, no, I, I agree, Rudy. I think I think the team is in a good space. A lot of the the guys who are, who are currently in the team and in the squad is guys who's who's been involved with the team for with the with the with the team for many years now. They um the the coaches haven't um really changed a, a lot of the guys. Those guys who settle, they they understand the way the coaches want to play and. And of course, um, like you guys are seeing, like any rugby team in the world, try to adjust and try to improve certain aspects of the game. And I think the the national team is doing well. You know, um, uh, hopefully, it shows in the games as well. Like you, you guys would probably would probably have seen some of the things that are maybe a bit different than than even last season. So, um, yeah, and and like you said, I think it's a settled squad. I think the guys are are, are confident as well. Um, over the last few years, I think the Springboks managed to get a couple of results in New Zealand. So I think the guys will take confidence from that. Yeah, Marvin, just from our side, we want to say thank you very yeah, much man, for your yes time. You. Um, I know you're a busy man. You know, two, two and a newborn is not easy. Um, I can give you the, the, the blueprint about the newborn. It's it's, it's <laughs> not easy, especially when they're teething. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for, you, for, your, for time, your time, for coming out. Our um, first episode, you know, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. First <laughs> guest, I think we're quite <laughs> excited and thank you for being with us, yeah. my friend. Yeah, thanks a lot, yeah. man. And enjoy the family man. time, you know. Um, yeah. You know, Rudy will know as well. Um, I will know. Happy wife. Happy yeah, life, Happy life, that's <laughs> what I say. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, also, just quickly for me, just thank you to you guys as well. It's a, it's an honor for me to be to be the first guest on, on the show. I want to wish you guys well with the, with the, with the future endeavors and, and, and with the Behind the Rock show um, podcast and and hopefully I can I can be back in the future and and um yeah and we and, and the show can go from from success to success. So so yeah, go well guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. Marvin. Appreciate Have it, a nice day, champion. Take care, mate. Bye. Cheers, guys. Bye. Cheers, mate. That was Marvin Ori, Oof, Juan, huh? Yeah, interesting, interesting. Very good <laughs> insights we got from him. Yeah, I'm I'm happy and sad at the same time. You know, you don't want to see a, a massive, massive um, talent like that leaving the Stormers and a, and a good oak as well leaving the Stormers. Yeah, apparently a fantastic leader as well. 100%, yeah. So, but at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do and, and, and change is good. Um, I mean, you had a change, I had a change. Yeah, you we, know. All gotta, we all go through it. 100%, you're scared at some time. Uh, you know, once you get there, uh, it takes you a couple of weeks, one month, and you straight into it. You get that feel of the different culture. You can try to learn the language, uh, um, how, um, how they, you know, operate on things. And then you get used to the weather. Uh, you miss the brain, the families. But that's yeah, just life, man. You, you, you just got to adapt to survive sometimes. And that's how you grow. That's how you grow. That's what the experience I've picked up, the experience you've picked up um, being at... Japan, France, yeah. Victoria. You've been around the park, yeah, actually. Not, it's not about me. We're talking about Marvin. Okay. <laughs> We're talking about Marvin. Yeah, thank you, sir. But, uh, but I want to wish, I think from the two of us, we obviously want to wish him all the best with making that World Cup squad. You know, that is a stressful time he's going into. Yeah, yeah. Most he's of them are going into. 100%. Yeah. He's, he's done well. He's, he's, he's he picked up his head nicely. Good start. There's a lot of players now, especially in good that position. Good start for him. Um, so, yeah. So, there's, there's two more games and I don't know what's... what's what's uh, left before the, the Rugby World Cup, but it's, it's picked up his hand, so hopefully he can just keep on raising that hand and, yeah. and, and get this opportunity. And, and so Mavi, from the two of us, we hope you make it, my friend. Um, yep. Holding thumbs for you. Mm. And episode one is almost done, partner. 100%. How are you feeling about it? <laughs> I'm excited, eh? It was good to chat a bit, uh, you know, about the general stuff of life. You know, there's there's so much more we're going to talk about. Like we said earlier, we're going to talk about... This is just a start. This is a start. Just a start. This is all this is. Yeah, we still have to dig deep into the Rudy Page life. Oof, the Juan de Jong life. 
and all the other stuff. So um, it's exciting times. Um, hopefully we get a couple of followers. You know, hopefully if you're watching, you're the OG. Okay, you're the day one. Yes. And hopefully, mom, we dad, <laughs> thank mom, you guys. <laughs> we can we say we made it uh, too soon. Too soon, oh, too, too soon, soon, too soon. <laughs> so yeah, it's good, it's good, it's good fun. I mean, episode one. Hopefully, we can get to episode hundred, one thousand. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just happy we got it off the floor. We started yeah. with something. Um, if you guys want to interact with the two of us, I think you can, you can slide into our DMs if there's any things. Yeah. And be nice. Specifically, you guys want us to to discuss on the show. I think we're gonna keep it rugby related, mentorship stuff that and we know. Anything, just say anything. Anything. Yeah, we might get guys on. Yeah, we got good friends, you know, that just went through difficult. Talking you know, about times. good friends, who's who's on our next episode, brother? Who so do we, we got lined up? Yeah, is it exciting. It's, it's exciting. Um, you know, I, I sent some emails, some WhatsApp, okay. some texts, some phone calls overseas. Who did you get? Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to 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 get one of my teammates, um, old roommates. Oh wow! He's a World Cup winner. What? He's a speedster. He's actually a, a everything winner, if you can call it that way. He's a speedster. Uh -huh. um, such a good bloke on the show. Um, um, to to just quickly in introduce the one and only Colby, a Cheslin Colby, a Cheslin Colby, a Cheslin Colby. <laughs> so there we got it guys our guys, next episode we will have the one and only Cheslin Colby on the show I think that is as exciting as you guys yeah. want it to be so please tune into it's the next episode of Behind the Rock we'll be discussing the past games we'll be talking a bit of life with life, Chessy we'll talk everything with Cheslin if you got a few questions you guys want to ask Cheslin please uh, let us know in our DMs of at Behind the Rock yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, this week is going to be too long. Me too, me too. So um, yeah, excited to get him on board, and uh, we can chat, 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 and chat yes. a little bit. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Thanks, guys. That's it from the first episode of Behind the Rock. Cheers. Take care.